parents for, that they raise their kids in the fear of the Most High, that they honor their parents. Heavenly Father, fulfill your will within this family on this day. Join these two families together in this union and let no man come against this marriage. What you put together, let no man put asunder. Heavenly Father, bless these two people as they become one in the name and the fear of the Most High. So in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the name of Ahia, Ba Hashem Yishaya, Warawak. In the name of Ahia, Ba Hashem Yishaya, Warawak. In the name of Ahia, Ba Hashem Yishaya, Warawak. With all the power from the Most High that was put in me, I now pronounce y'all two one flesh. You may kiss your brow. Let's go to Leviticus, chapter 23, and verse 1. Let's go there. And the Most High spoke Hold on now. You're going a little bit too fast. Let's go to Leviticus, chapter 3, 23, and verse 1. Let's get it. And the Most High spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Most High. Concerning the what? Concerning the feasts of the Most High. Come on. Which he shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Holy gatherings. Even these are my feasts. So wait, hold up. So we're dealing with Leviticus 23 here, right? And the scripture says that these would be holy gatherings and his feasts. That mean that we would come together and reverence the Most High on these high holy days. Now this world, obviously they have feasts. They have Christmas, Thanksgiving, Mother's Day, so on and so forth. But are, but are they ordained by the Most High? Are they in the Bible? Okay, we're gonna get some understanding and really there's a, there's a serious nugget in understanding Leviticus 23 that I'm going to show you. Now, you know how we teach the times and the Enoch calendar and how it shows you how the days and seasons won't fall out of order, right? Well, here's what you have to understand. It takes more faith to believe in the science that they teach instead of understanding and believing in what the Most High have shown us through the scriptures. Like for instance, they tell you that a year is 365 days and a half, right? Now, how many days are there in a week? Seven days, right? Has, has there ever been a week where Monday and Tuesday have fallen out of place? So let's just say when you go to the new year and it's on a Saturday, that next day is always what? Sunday, right? Has there ever been a day where Sunday has not come? Okay, well, let's do some simple math. Seven days a week, right? It's 52 weeks per year. What's that number? What's the number? 360 what? Four. It's okay, black people. So we have 364 days in which the Most High have given us to complete a new year, okay? In other words, just say if you were born on a Thursday, right? One year later, shouldn't that be a Thursday? If that's one year from the day you were born, shouldn't that be a Thursday? We're talking about one year from that same day. Why is it a Wednesday? Or a Tuesday? Or a Monday? Because man have thought to change times and laws. Matter of fact, get it. Get the book of Daniel, chapter 7 and verse 25. Let's get it real quick.
Daniel 7 and 25. What does it say? And he shall speak great words against the Most High. And he shall speak great words against the Most High. Read. And shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And shall wear God's people out. Okay? We're wore out, brothers and sisters. We don't know which way is which. What's the truth? What's not the truth? God's people are wore out here. Come on. And think to change times and laws. And think to change what? Times and laws. Now, it said that he would think to change times and laws. Not actually change times and laws, but think to change them. Now, what law is it pertaining to? When you go into Exodus 20, it tell you what? Remember the Sabbath day to do what? Keep it holy. To keep it holy. So there's a law concerning a day. This is what Daniel was talking about. Okay? Now, like I said, let's get back to the point. So it's seven days a week, 52 weeks in a year. That's 364 days. Well, what's a complete circle? What's the degrees of a complete circle? 360, right? Okay, I'm glad you guys understand that. Now we're catching on. But where's the four days? Where do they come in? The changing of the seasons. So there's a pause. There's a time where it's four days within a year where it's a transition from spring to summer, from summer to fall, and from fall to winter. Okay? These are things that are common sense. We should know this, understand this, and be on time with this. This is how that our feast days don't go out of season, how they don't go and get dislodged from time, okay? If we know this, it's like this. From Sabbath to Sabbath, okay, we'll know what time we're on. Now, go back to Leviticus 23. I'm going to deal with this for a second. Because I want to show y'all something that y'all might not have ever seen. Now, you know how when we teach the Bible Academy, we teach brothers and sisters, you never have to go into the extra biblical books to teach what we're teaching. You can stay right in the 66 books of the King James Bible and teach the truth. Now, I'm going to show you how Enoch's calendar is in Leviticus. Watch this. Read it again, Leviticus 23 and 1. And the Most High spoke unto Moses, saying, Saying what? Speak unto the children of Israel. So speak unto the children of Israel. And say unto them concerning the feast of the Most High. And wait, hold up for a second. With speaking of the children of Israel. Do you notice the reoccurring theme that throughout the Bible, it's speaking to a lineage and a bloodline of people? Where do we get this spiritual Israel from? Where do we get a spiritual people when the blessing from, from Abraham was given to a physical man and a descendant of his seed? That's the deception within the doctrine. But watch this. Read it. And say unto them concerning the feast of the Most High. So say to Israel concerning the feast of the Most High. Say what? Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation, even these are my feasts. Even these are my feasts. Read. Six days shall work be done. Now, let me tell y'all something. I never understood this in it all, and I was looking, to, looking at a lesson, and it hit me. And I said, there it is. So six days shall work be done, but what? But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the rest. You know what that is? Do y'all know what that is? That's the first month. The first Sabbath of the month. This is a time period that we're reading in Leviticus. This is the beginning. You know how we'll look at a calendar and it'll show you the holidays based on the beginning of the year all the way to the end? 
Well, that's what we're reading here in Leviticus 23. So six days shall work be done. That's the first week of the new calendar year. Check this out. This is how we'll never run out of time and know where we're at wherever we dwell. Six days shall work be done, but what? Read he it. shall do no work therein. Go ahead, read it again from verse 1. Six Come on. days shall work be done, Come on. but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Okay, so see, this is the first Sabbath in the year. Y'all understand that? So when the new year starts, this is day seven, the Sabbath. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. Read it. A holy convocation. A holy gathering, because we should be coming together on the seventh day of the week. Read. Ye shall do no work therein. We shall do no work therein. Come on. It is the Sabbath of the Most High. Of who? It is the Sabbath of the Most High. Till Constantine change it, in seven, until they change it. It is the Sabbath of the Most High. Until 70 AD. It is the Sabbath of the Most High. Until I say that it's different. It is the Sabbath of the Most High. Now if he made it, I can't change it. It's the Sabbath of the Most High. Come on. And all your dwellings. And where? And all your dwellings. No matter where you're at, whether you get, whether we're in Israel, whether we're exiled from it, whether we're in South America, South Asia, America, it is in all our dwellings that we should observe this time. Watch this now. Come on. These are the feasts of the Most High. So it says again, these are the feast of the Most High, starting with the first day of the calendar year, leading up to the first Sabbath of the year. And every seventh, sab every seventh day sequentially throughout the year. But watch this. Come on. Even the holy convocation, which e ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In their when? In their seasons. In their when? In their seasons. So these Sabbaths come in specifically in their seasons at fixed times. So there should be no situation where you look at the Passover and the Passover come in Friday one year. And then the next year you look on the calendar and it's Tuesday and man's excuse is it can never be the same. How does that happen? When you can count seven days every day, every week, that never change. I don't understand that. Monday always comes. Tuesday always comes. Wednesday always comes. And, and, and mind you, the Most High never named them Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. He named them one through seven. The first day of the week. The second day of the week. So these days have never changed. So how now do we get that these days jump from place to place based on a Gregorian and a Julian calendar that came from the Caesars? How does that happen? Now check this out. Read it. Leviticus 23 and 5. In the 14th day of the first month. Wait, now hold up now. He said in the 14th day of the first month. So now, it just told you about the first week of the new year, which is the first Sabbath of the year. Now, it's the 14th day. What's that? The second Sabbath in the year. The 14th day of the first. So notice how Leviticus 23 is a timeline of the year. Y'all see that? So it's given you the first Sabbath in a year. Now, 14 days later, it should be the Lord's Passover. So now, how does the Passover jump from place to place? It shouldn't. Because if it's the seventh day, the first Sabbath of the year, and then 14 days after the, after the, the first day of the year, it's now the Passover, which is 14 days in, which is the second week, that means it should always fall on a Sabbath. Y'all see how the most I give y'all time? 
It's, com it's simple. It's not complicated. Go ahead. In the 14th day of the first month, at even is the Most High's Passover. Mm. And on the 15th day of the same month. And on the 15th day, which is what? The third week of the year is what? It's the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Then Unleavened Bread come in. Y'all see that? Come on. Unto the Most High. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. And the first day you shall have no holy convocation. You shall do no sovereign work therein. So when you're dealing with unleavened bread, the first day is a holy gathering, a holy convocation. And then the last day of unleavened bread is a holy convocation, which so happened to be on the end of a Sabbath. Okay, from feast day to feast day, from Sabbath to Sabbath. Simple. Read. But you shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Most High seven days. In the seventh day is a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein. And the Most High spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, mm. When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, there ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priests. So now, when you go into any land, or you go into the land you dwell, there should be an offering or of first fruits of the land. Right? Come on. And you shall wave the sheaf before the Most High to be accepted for you. On the morrow, after the Sabbath, the so priest shall So on wave the it. morrow, after the Sabbath. Which Sabbath is it talking about? Right after the Passover. The morrow after the Sabbath, the next day. Come on. And you shall offer that day when you wave the sheaf and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering to the Most High. Why? Why does it say that? This is, this is bifold, doublefold, triplefold understanding. Because when the Passover hit, Christ was laid flat in sacrifice and was, and was already our Passover as it began to dawn on the first day of the week. Going into a living bread. Okay. Read it. And the meat offering thereof shall be two tenth deals of fine flour mangled with oil, an offering made by fire unto the Most High. Read. For a sweet Savior, and the drink offering there, thereof shall be of wine. And so, most people be like, well, how comes you guys still aren't doing the ceremonial laws of the meat portion of it? We're going to get to that. Okay? Give you an understanding of that scripture. Because Christ was our ultimate sacrifice. But watch this. Go ahead. The fourth part of the hen. And ye shall eat neither bread nor porced corn, parched corn, nor green ears, until the selfsame day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. Come on. It shall be a statue forever throughout your Wait, generations. Wait, for how long? Forever throughout your generations and Unt all wait. your dwellings. No, no, it don't say that. Read that again. And ye shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green ears until the selfsame day that you have brought an offering unto your God. Mm. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generation and all your dwellings. That's saying until the new covenant comes forever there it is so when the bible tell you it's forever is now the most high against himself it's forever and we're going to give you some understanding about that come on and you shall cut count unto you from the morrow after the sabbath so you'll count to you from the morrow after the sabbath so after the passover you count what? Read. From the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. Seven Sabbaths shall be complete. So after the Passover, you're going to count seven Sabbaths. What's seven times seven? Forty-nine. Forty-nine. Read. 
Even into the morrow after the seventh and Sabbath. And then even to the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, read. Shall you number 50 days? Shall you number 50 days? See, it tell you in the Old Testament that the things in there was a shadow of good things to come. Do you all understand that? So the festival here that was there that's erroneously or sometimes ignorantly called Pentecost is first fruits. So in other words, you can't be in a church and celebrate Pentecost without dealing with the Passover. Because what seven Sabbaths are you counting from? How do you get to Pentecost without the Passover? <laughs> So you'll count seven Sabbaths from the morrow after the Sabbath to get 50. So you just can't arrive to 50 and say, hey, I'm here at the celebration of Pentecost based off of what? See, the prophecies in the scripture let you know how to count the days leading up to Pentecost or first fruits. Okay? Y'all see that? So you can't say, okay, well, I'm dealing with Pentecost. Okay, how do you deal with Pentecost without knowing what, what seven Sabbaths you're counting from? How does that happen? It doesn't. That's why the Most High have given us time. That's why there's a law in Exodus 20 giving us time. Remember, notice that's the only commandment that it says do what? Remember. Because he knew our people would forget it. Okay? Which is the Sabbath day. Simple. Come on. And ye shall offer a new meat offering to the Most High. Ye shall bring out of your habitation two waved loaves of two tenth deals. They shall be of fine flour. They shall be baked with leavening. They are the first fruits of the Most High. Mm. And ye shall offer with me bread, seven lambs without blemish of the first year. Now, skip to verse 19 real quick. Then ye shall sacrifice one kid of the goats for a sin offering and two lambs of the first year for a sacrifice of peace of all peace offerings. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall wave them with the bread of the first fruit for a wave offering for the, before the Most High. Go ahead. With the two lambs, they shall be holy to the Most High for the priests. And ye shall proclaim on the selfsame day that it may be a holy convocation unto you. Ye shall do no servile work therein. It shall be a statue forever. For how long? Forever. For how long? Forever. Come on now. And all your dwellings throughout your generations. Now. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 7. Now we're going into the New Testament to give you some understanding on it. Go ahead. Perch out therefore the old Lebanon. Now what does it say here? Read it again. Perch out therefore the old leaven. Now let me give this to y'all in historical context and understanding. This scripture was saying purge out there for the old leaven, not just those that were doing wrong things within the church, but it was also breaking down the old doctrine. That's what was within the church at the time. Purge out the old leaven, read, that ye may be a new lump, that you may be a new lump. Read as ye are unleavened, as we're unleavened. Come on, for even Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Exactly. So this is why when you see us and we're dealing with the Passover or we're dealing with first fruits, we're not out here doing the ritual ceremonies of cutting the lambs and all that crazy because Christ was already our Passover. Okay, He's already done that sacrifice for us. Does that mean that we don't observe it? No. We still observe it. He just fulfilled it. Okay. Now watch this. Go now 
to Colossians. Okay, you want to go to Colossians, right? Give me Colossians 2 and 13. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh, have he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses? Matter of fact, I think it's Corinthians. One moment. I got you. Give me Second Corinth. Here we go. Two and thirteen. One moment. Okay. Go down now, matter of fact. Give me Romans 11 and 15. Go to Romans. Give me a Roman, Romans 11 and 15. Go ahead. Romans 11 and 15. Read it. For if the casting away of them That's it. be the reconciling of the world, what shall we, the receiving of them be but life from the dead? For if the first fruit be holy. Now, if the first fruit be holy, which is Christ, read. The lump is also holy. The lump is also holy. Holy. That's why Christ had to go and do those sacrifices before us because he was the first fruit. Now, Christ being the first fruit is holy. The lump is also holy. Go ahead. And if the root be holy. And if the root be holy, which is Christ. So are the branches. So are his branches. Go ahead. And if some of the branches be broken off. Now, check this out. Now, if some of the branches be broken off, speaking of the natural branches, okay, and notice we're in Romans, where we're dealing with Paul's writing where people say it's hard to be understood. So Paul is now talking about the natural branches, meaning the natural indigenous people of Israel. Come on. And thou being a wild olive tree, well, and thou being a wild olive tree, well graded and among them, read, and with them partakers of the root of the fatness of the olive tree. Come on. Boast not against the branches. See, he said boast not against the branches. So you can't have a spiritual people that say that they're okay. Well, here's the thing. These prophecies belong to a person that was blessed based off of the prophecies and promises of their forefathers. So now all of a sudden in 2000 in a lie, you can't come in and say, well, now that changed. Abraham never blessed his sons and his son's sons. The line never went from Christ, from, from David to Solomon to Christ. That never happened. There was no need for that because you know why? In the Old Testament, it's always been spiritual Israel. There's no such thing. So you need to understand, here goes Paul talking about a natural branch. Okay, read it. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. Exactly. So he said if you boast, you don't boast against, he's, he said read it again now. But if thou Romans, boast. Romans 11. Come on. And 18. Boast not against the branches. That's it. Come on. But if thou boast. But if you boast. Thou bearest not the root. You bearest not the root. Meaning now you don't understand really the meaning of why you're in this understanding. Come on. But the root thee. But the root be. Come on. Thou will say then the branches were broken off. So you'll say then the branches were broken off. Just like when we deal with the diaspora period. 
when the indigenous people of Israel actually left their homeland. And then some years later, they talk about some Israel became a nation in 1949, 48. So what happened before that? Who were the people before 1948? So now all of a sudden, a, a stranger comes in and claims the land and says, you know what, we're the people. How does that happen? But they boast against the natural branch. Well, we're the Jews. What you mean? Israel is 12 tribes. Okay, Jew is sure for Judah. That's one tribe of Israel. Okay, read it. That I might be grafted in. Exactly. So here's where now the doctrine comes in. Where I heard it, you know, in seminary and all this. You know, well, you guys, you black people, you guys are ham. You guys are cursed. And y'all should pray and hope that you're grafted in. What is that? What, what, is, what is that? Read. Well, because of unbelief. Well, because of unbelief. Read. They were broken off. They were broken off. Why? Because you can go to the curses con concerning the people in the Bible. Okay? Dealing with Deuteronomy. And read all the curses that precede us not following the Most High. Not dealing with his first fruits. Not dealing with those things. What's sin, y'all? Transgression of the law. Simple. Is that in the New Testament or Old Testament? Where is it found? Come on now. Where my Bible scholar is at? Mm -hmm. What is it now? I heard it. What is it? First John 3 and 4. So we're not talking about an Old Testament scripture. Matter of fact, get it. First John 3 and 4. Let's get it. Because if you go to multiple people and you ask them, what sin? What's wrong? What's wrong doing? People will say, well, whatever God don't like. That's not a, good, that's not a Bible answer. Well, what sin? What, what, whatever the most I displease of. That, that's not a Bible answer. 1 John 3 and 4. 1 John 3 and 4. Come on, let's get it. Whosoever committeth sin. So whosoever committeth sin, meaning any sin that is committed, you can understand it by this way. Read. Transgresses, again, transgresses also the law. Transgresseth also the law. Now, listen. Now, most people would like you to think that the only law that's in the Bible is the love. So now... If that's the only law in the Bible, what is sin? Now it's what I determine? Okay. Is is because Christ said, if you love me, do what? Keep my what? Commandments. Simple. We don't have to make it more complex than it is. Read. For sin is the transgression of the law. That's what sin is. So now, I can look at this. I can look at thou shall not kill. Now here's the thing, brothers and sisters. If I take a gun, and I point it to my brother's head, and I blow his brains out, is that not a sin? Am I going to hell for that? If I don't repent? Okay, well, how about if I commit adultery with another man's wife? Is that not sin punishable by death? So now the only, only passage in scripture that says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy, that's the one that's done away with. Do y'all see the controversy in that? That's what James 2 and 10 is saying. If you take the whole law, but yet offend in one point, you're guilty of them all. You can't pick and choose what you want. If you're dealing with the royal law, you have to deal with it in its totality. You can't say, well, you know what? I don't believe in that, but I believe in thou shall not kill. Well, it's all in the same scroll. 
How could you pick this one and say that this one don't matter? Okay, it doesn't work that way. But finish that scripture. And ye know that he is that he was that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. In him is no sin. Go back to where you was at. Now, we're going to get some understanding here. Let's go to Acts chapter 2, verse 1, matter of fact. Let's go there. Acts 2 and 1. Acts 2 and 1. Come on. And when the day of the Pentecost was fully come. Now pause. When the day of Pentecost was fully come. Now, Deacon Jermaine, you, you, you got a mic? Go grab you one. I need you to get this. In the Strong's Concordance. And tell me what it says in the Strong's Concordance. So we in Acts 2 and 1. Look up that word there that says Pentecost. Let's see what that word says in the New Testament. Testament. This is um, the Strong's Concordance, G4005. Pente Read it. Pentecost equals the 50th day. The what? The 50th day. Keep reading. The second of the third great Jewish feast. The, the, of the what now? The second of the third greatest Jewish feast. Wait, so you mean to tell me that the Pentecost that they doing in the Christian church is the second of the three great feasts that we were supposed to be observing. First starting with Passover unleavened bread, then first fruits ending with tabernacles. It, that's what that definition is saying? Calm. Keep reading. Celebrated at Jerusalem yearly. Separ wait, when was it celebrated? Celebrated at Jerusalem yearly. So Pentecost or first fruits was a feast day that was celebrated at Jerusalem every year. So every male, every family had to go and gather together under first fruits. Come on. The seventh week after the Passover. Wait, hold up. The what? The seventh week after the Passover. Wait, hold up. That's not in there. Don't, that's not the right definition. You ain't reading the right definition. The seventh week after the Passover. So it's telling you in the Strong's Concordance, based, now how did we miss this? How are we going to church all these years and miss this? So Pentecost, which, we, which is still done to this day. How do we do Pentecost but miss the Passover? and say that that's done away with. When Pentecost is based off of seven weeks from the Passover, and we're not talking about Easter. Okay? The most I have nothing to do with bunnies. Or eggs. And bunnies don't lay eggs. Okay? Notice that that's a pagan worship of a fertility god. That's a whole nother lesson for a whole nother time. Come on. Um, in grateful recogn recognition of the complete harvest. Mm. So we see within the definition of Pentecost, it's simply first fruits that's found in the Old Testament. A festival in where Israelites came together 50 days after the Passover 
it was one of our major feast days, a holy convocation. Like the scriptures say, three times shall the males, the males appear before the Lord. Okay, now check this out. Acts 2 and 1 again. Come on. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come. So now, when first fruits had fully come, read. They were with one accord in one place. Now, why were they in one place? Because it tell you in the Old Testament that they were supposed to all come together on one of the, that was one of the major three feasts. So this is why they were all together. It wasn't because it was a church service based off of 50. But it was because it was 50 days after the Passover. Come on. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven mm. as of a rushing mighty wind. At us, at, as of rushing mighty wind. Read. And it filled all the house. And it filled all the houses. Where they were sitting. Read. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues. Cloven tongue. Read. Like as of fi fire. Like as of fire. Come and on. And it sat upon the, each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay. Now they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, I grew up in the Pentecostal church. Okay? And for me growing up, many years, I'm talking about, I don't know, what we talking about? 20 years? Life. Yeah, entire life till life, we came here. Lifers. Right. You, you understand? Trying to get our tongues to roll Because what was taught to us in the church that the evidence of the Holy Spirit was and P. As if I can't get into heaven if I don't teach speak gibberish. Now check this out. Read it. To speak with other tongues. To speak with other tongues. A, a Deacon Jermaine, get that word tongues in the strong concordance. Help me out here. Testing. Um, it's G1100. And the definition is the tongue, a member of the body. We know that. An organ of speech. Speech, come on. A tongue. A tongue. The language. A what? The language. A what? Language. A language. Or dialect. Or dialect. Used by a particular people. Used by a particular people. So the definition tell you it's a dialect used by people, a known language within the earth. Okay, the most high is, listen, he's not the author of confusion. So here's the thing. We all speak English in this building. So why would the Most High send a mighty Russian wind of us speaking in an unknown language so now we got to break it down and translate what we're saying? When we can understand what we're saying. The Most High is not the author of confusion. That doesn't make sense. So you got somebody babbling in a corner and the Bible say that if somebody speak in tongue, it need to be two or three interpreters. You'd never see that in the church. And certainly they can't vouch for the language that's being spoken. You can't say, oh, that's Latin. That's this, that's that. Don't sit there. Oh, praise him. Praise who? And what is he saying? Not up in here. That's when the ushers come. Ushers. Get him up out of here. Get him up out of here. He need to go home and do that. He want to utter an unknown tongue like the scriptures say. If you utter an unknown tongue, you need to go do that in your closet. Get him up out of here. We, as the Spirit gave them utterance. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, it's going to show you what they were speaking. Check it out. We and there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews. There were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews. So these were Jews. Okay. So let's get this. Let's get some understanding. 
Why did they all come together? Because in the Old Testament, it was commanded that all the Israelites come together for first fruits. So just like you all came from New Jersey, Philadelphia, Delaware, and we all came to one place, Okay, guess what? There are some gatherings where people are coming from Puerto Rico, where people are coming from Mexico, Israel, wherever, to gather on first fruits. Now, they would be considered what? Mexicans, or they, they live in Mexico, or this or that. So this is what you're seeing here. Read it again carefully and critically. Read it now. Devout men. Wait, no, go back. They were what? Read it up. And there the were dwellings at Jerusalem, Jews. Jews. Devout men. Devout men. Out of every nation under the heaven. Do y'all see that? Out of every nation under heaven. So it was Jews that were scattered throughout the earth. Okay, they were from every nation under heaven. They were from here. They were from there. They were from here. They came together for the holy day. Read. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confronted, confound, because that every man heard them speak in his own language. In his own what? In his own language. Wait, hold up. It don't say that. He heard every man speak in Alakanda Honda. In his own language. In his own particular dialect, his own language. Read. And they were all amazed. And they were amazed because they're looking at each other like, wait, I know this brother never left. He never left Jerusalem. But I'm in Greece, and I was born in Greece, and I understand what he's saying in Greek. What is this? Read. Saying one to another, behold. Behold. Are not all these which speak Galileans? See that? Because they were going back to the place where they were born, where they lived. They was like, are these not Galileans? They from Galilee, aren't they? Look at these cats. These cats are from Galilee. Read. And how hear we every man in, in our own tongue, wherein we were born. Where we were born. The language of the land I was born in. So this speaks nothing of us coming together. And speaking about nonsense. So let me give you the understanding of what Pentecost is about. It's about when the Holy Spirit fell. And we know based on the scripture, the Holy Spirit is wisdom. So imagine this understanding where now brothers and sisters of all areas came together. And now the Most High is speaking to his people in their particular language. So what is happening here? He's reversing what happened at the Tower of Babel. At the Tower of Babel, in the beginning, the languages were confounded. Now the Most High is unconfounding the languages through the spirit of the Most High. So now I can hear in my own language. I'm a Greek. I can hear in Greek. I'm an Italian. I can hear in, in, in the Italian dialect. But I know this man is speaking at one time. How, am I, how, how are we all hearing this? Okay. Now, how many times, brothers and sisters, have you seen where we've been in a church and somebody will go and speak in a corner and nobody knows what they're saying? And the only thing we could do is clap our hands and acknowledge that's dangerous. You, you can't vouch what that spirit is saying. You just know that it feels good. But the Bible says that the heart is desperately wicked. You can't base a, a belief system off of emotions. Oh, well, that feel good. He praising. Just because somebody jumping up and down and slobbering at the mouth doesn't mean it's holy. Okay? I remember I, I had a pastor I grew up with, and they, they were saying that you can't sing your way into heaven. Well, you certainly can't act out your way into heaven either. Okay? It comes with an understanding, with a belief. 
The Most High is not, he's not going to send confusion throughout the earth. So here's an instance where the Holy Spirit fell on these people here. So now they could hear the doctrine of the truth. And we're going to break down what the truth was in just a moment. Keep reading. Acts 2 and 9. Come on. Part Parthians, Parthians. Parthians and Medes. And Medes. And so the Me Wait, hold up now. So now what is this scripture giving you? It's giving you actually, it's giving you nationalities of people. Parthians. Medes. So you got the Medes and the Persians here. Or people that came from those areas and could understand what the disciples were teaching in their own native tongue. Notice how the Bible painstakingly gives you where they were from. For a particular reason. So you can identify the language. Do y'all see that? Come on. And as dwellers, dwellers in the Mesopotamian. And dwellers of Mesopotamia. And in Judea. And in Judea. And in Capria. And Capernia. And Pontus and Asia. See that? So it's giving you the different areas where they were from it, and the multiple languages that were spoke there and what was revealed through the Spirit of the Most High. Come on. Apologia and Pomeline in Egypt and in the parts of Libya about Crete. About Crete, go ahead. And strangers in Rome, Jews and proselytes. Jews and what? Proselytes. Proselytes. What's a proselyte, y'all? A convert. So there weren't just Israelites at the Feast of First Fruits, but there were converts too. There was all nations that, have, that came to that feast. Come on. Cretes and Arabians. Cretes and Arabians. We do hear them speak in our tongues the wonderful work of the Most High. See, that's what the Holy Spirit had revealed on that day. Read. And they were all amazed and mm. were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? What is the meaning of this? So what's the meaning of this, of me coming in this building or in this gathering, and I can now hear what they're saying in my personal language? Come on. Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. So look what they said, the same thing they said about John the Baptist and Christ. Here come the slurs. These brothers were full of new wine. They're drunk. Read. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you. Wait, hold up. Who stood up now? Peter. Peter. And he said to the people, be this known to you. He wanted them to know this point. Now, there was a reason why the Most High unlocked all the languages at this point. Because there was a crucial point he wanted to teach the people. Now watch this. Come on. And this knowing unto you, and hearken unto, me, unto my words. Come on. For these are not drunken. They're not drunken. As ye suppose. As you suppose. Seeing it is but the third hour of the day. It's the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith the Most High. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Upon all flesh, come on. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. We. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Go ahead. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit. Come on. And they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood Re? before that great and notable day of the Most High come. Re? And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Most High, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, we shall be saved, shall be saved, come on, ye men of Israel, you men of Israel, so here's, here's now Peter making an opening statement, 
The Holy Spirit then fell on him. And now he's saying, listen, y'all must call on the name of the Lord. Now, why is he saying this? Because the Lord in whom they just, of whom he's preaching, they just slewed. Now, check this out. Read it. Hear these words, Yeshai of Nazareth. A man approveth of the Most High among you. So now they give who they're speaking of. He said, Yeshia of Nazareth. Okay? A man that was amongst you. Read. By miracles and wonders and signs. By miracles, wonders, and signs. You remember that guy? Now, mind you, this is an axe, y'all. So Christ has already been. You know, he's already been slayed about 50 days ago. So now they come together in a holy day, right? People of all, you know, Israelites of all areas speak in different languages. And the Most High opened up the language for one purpose. To tell them about the Savior that they just crucified. Hold up now. It's about to get good. So imagine us being a group of which we are, Israelites, slaying Christ. And then the spirit of wisdom come in to reveal to us who we just slayed. He was that one. It was him. Now check this out. Read it. The Most High did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being de delivered by determinate counselor and foreknowledge of the Most High, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Now, now, get this. Because I'm going to tell you, a lot of people would have been offended sitting in that room. He said, you by wicked hands have took this innocent man and slain him. I mean, Peter's up there giving it to him. And imagine the Most High revealing and, and breaking down the languages so he could tell them that you just killed Christ. Now imagine that. That's like, that's like a revelation from on high. You go there for a party. And you know a lot of people go to the feast days to turn up. You go there for a party. But when, when it was revealed to him, it was straight correction sitting there from the pulpit, from where Peter was teaching. So they came together for some serious correction. Read it. Whom the Most High had raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that it should be holden of it. Read. For David speaking concerning him. Now, because some came for David. They thought it was still, you know, because remember, a lot of the Israelites there didn't believe in Christ. So they still thought that the kingship stayed in, 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 in reign and in, in, in remained with David. So they came to honor him. So now Peter, knowing what they came for, had to address this matter. Watch this now. Come on. I foresaw the Most High always before my face, for he is on my right hand, and I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and hmm. my tongue was glad. Moreover, all, also my flesh shall rest in hope, because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy Holy One to see corruption. See corruption. Watch this. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren. Men and brethren. Let me freely speak unto you. So now he's saying, okay, he done made his opening statement, and now he's like, I'm really going to drop it. Let me freely speak to y'all. Is it cool? Are y'all offended yet? Now I'm really going to tell you what the deal is. Come on. Speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried. So that he is both dead and buried. Come on. And his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Read. 
Therefore, being a prophet and knowing the Most High, had sworn with an oath to him. He swore with the oath to him. Now, who's the oath that he swore on? David. So the Most High swore with his own lips an oath to David. Now, guess what, y'all? I need y'all to answer this question. If the Most High swears something, can it be taken back? No. So he swore with an oath to David what? Read it. That the fruit of his loins. That the fruit of his what? That the fruit of his loins. The what? Wait, hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Hold up. Y'all understand this is something the Most High swore on David. That the fruit of his loins. What does that mean? Before we even finish the scripture, what does the fruit of his loins mean? From what? From sperm, from a seed, right? From birth, from a natural bloodline, right? The fruit of my loins. If it come from my loins, that means that I birth that nation or that child. So there's a promise in a, in a, in, in a covenant that was given that was promised that the line of kings would come through David from his loins. That's why he said, listen, we got to get out this old wine and teach this new wine. This new doctrine. Okay? Y'all are here for David, but don't understand in whom came from his loins, y'all just slew him. What you mean? I, I thought the Most High just immaculately concepted him. That's Babylonian doctrine. Read it. According to the flesh. According to the way. Hold up. Read that again in context. Read no, right, right where you was at. Stay, don't go nowhere. Right where you was at. That verse. With an oath to him. With an oath to David. That are the fruit of his loins. That the fruit of his loins from his sperm. According to the flesh. According to the what? According to the flesh. To the spirit. According to the flesh. I thought it was spiritual Israel. According to the flesh. He, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He would raise up Christ from the flesh. According to the flesh to rise and, re and reign on the throne. See how that kills that spiritual Israel doctrine? Common sense. You can't look at a scripture in, or the Bible and, and quantify it in where you feel like it. No. <laughs> you can't get any clearer than that. That he would come from the seed of David according to the flesh, a bloodline, a people. Okay, what, 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 what gifts do this people have? Tremendous. We can't turn on a television and not see Israel. You, let's, let's remove the brown people from TV. Let's take, a, let's take it away. Let's remove us from TV. How dry is TV? Let's remove the brown people from the NFL. Now, if we remove the brown people from the NFL, we, unfortunately, the league's going to be slow and boring. Now, why is that? Is that perchance because these people are just in? No, there's a blessing from on high. That, that sits with these people, that they're physically stronger, faster. That's a blessing. That's a chosen people, an elect, my elect. Why could we go out in the sun and not need sunscreen? Is that not a curse if I go out in the sun and I just, I got to put on all this stuff so I don't get cancer? We have something that's built in us called melanin. 
That's a blessing. So you get all these people teaching all this crazy stuff, pan-Africanism, black this, black that, but never quantify why they, these people are blessed. Without these brown people, we wouldn't even be able to stop at a traffic sign. It was us that created those things. The clothes on your back, the cotton gin, Eli Whitney. Where did they get such knowledge from? The Most High says, these people are blessed. These are my elect. See, that's the story that's been hidden for years. Because why? Why is it important that this be a secret from the people? Because by default, this kingdom is under the other gods. And, if I, and guess what? If I don't wake these people up, I'm still on top, and the gods that I serve are still on top as well. But if I tell this person, hey, did you ever read Deuteronomy? Did you ever find out that you were the chosen people of God? Now all of a sudden, these people who were once slaves will reclaim their heritage and reach that pinnacle that they need to reach. All the stuff that we did, marching in Washington, Million man marches. What good has it done? Nothing. There's one king of this nation. And that king is Christ. There's one, one king. When it tell you in Genesis 49, Judah, the scepter shall not depart from Judah. And Christ is the gathering of the people. Everything that man has ascribed to do has never been able to do it because there's only one man that was set out to do it, which was Christ, that shed his innocent blood for us. That was the message that was taught on first fruits or what they call Pentecost. The man that you killed that you don't want to follow is the man that, is, that was there to save you and redeem you from your sins. You men of Israel. Notice how it went to the Jew first, right? <laughs> so it doesn't matter, right? What does the scripture say about that? Hold where you're at, and I'm going to close after this. Hold where you're at. Go to Romans 3. Romans 3, chapter 1. What advantage then have the Jew? Wait, hold up now. People say it don't matter who you are. What does it matter? God made everybody. He did, absolutely. But if it doesn't matter who I am, why is there a TV network set up to where I'm sending my money to Israel and blessing God's quote-unquote holy people who are not the people? So watch what this says. What advantage have the Jew? Read. Or what profit is there of circumcision? So what profit is it of the circumcision? And what is that circumcision? That's us being clean, observing the laws of the Most High God. Being set apart from this world. Why everybody's out there shopping? The Most High said, listen. This is my rest day. Do you know that's a funny thing? That identifies you all the way back to creation. And then they'll tell you where the laws came in with Moses. The law came in with Moses, huh? Well, I thought in the beginning the Most High rested on the seventh day. That's well before Moses. So before there was a Levitical priesthood, the Most High created the earth and rested and blessed and hallowed the seventh day. People say, well, I don't think there's one day greater than the next. Who said that? Who told you that? 
When the Most High said what he said himself. Go ahead. Much every way chiefly. Wait, hold up. So what advantage have the Jew? Or what profit him of the circumcision? Much every way. So it tells you it's an advantage, brothers and sisters, of you being and knowing who you are. There's a clear advantage. But what's the greatest advantage that we have knowing we're Israelites? Read. Chiefly. Chiefly, mainly. Because that unto them were committed the oracles of the Most High. So the truth. The oracles of the Most High were committed to the bloodline Israelites. That's the advantage, brothers and sisters, that the Most High revealed. Now, here's the thing when they say it doesn't matter, right? Who did the Most High give the law to? Who did he give it to? Us. No, 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 no. He ain't give it to you directly. Who did he give it to first? Well, Moses. 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 Moses was from the what? Levitical priesthood. He was from one of the 12 tribes of Israel. So they say it doesn't matter. Well, why give it to a Levite? It doesn't matter, right? Give it to somebody else. When Christ came on the earth and did what he had to do for us, what, what, what tribe was Christ from? Judah. It doesn't matter, though. Christ was multicultural. He, he was Jew, Mexican, Italian. He was everything. It doesn't matter, huh? So if it doesn't matter, how comes throughout the history of time the Most High have used his elect? From the seed in which he promised from. If it doesn't matter. Go ahead. For well, what if some did not believe so what if some did not believe so what if you don't believe that jews or israelites have an advantage what is what if some did not believe well i don't believe that i believe that god everything is equal let me let me give y'all news flash brothers and sisters everything is not equal we're in this nation under this captivity do y'all feel equal But, but yet and still, this world thinks it's right, right? They don't feel like there's nothing wrong, right? We're not the CEOs of every business or the owners of every business, but this world feels like that's okay. See, under a kingdom, somebody has to serve. Do y'all understand that? Under any kingdom, under any new rulership, somebody has to be on the top end, and somebody's on the lower end. Right now, we're on the bottom because we're suffering the curses of our forefathers. Do y'all understand that? Because I don't see any of us. Listen, if we weren't suffering the curses of our forefathers, we'd be able to buy this. We wouldn't have to rent this temporarily. Okay, we'd be like, look, okay, yeah, go to go to that go to that 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 ballroom right there that we own and have every feast day there. But guess what? This isn't the case. There's always some hurdles we gotta go over because we're still coming out of the curses of Deuteronomy twenty eight. Now let's finish this out. Read that. Finish it out. What if somebody not believe? Go ahead. Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? So because somebody's teaching you is spiritual Israel and it don't matter about who you are, should that make the faith of the Most High without effect? Read. The Most High forbid you. God forbid. Let the Most High be true. Let God be true. But every man a liar. I don't think that matters. As it is written. As it's what? As it is written. As it's written. You didn't write it. That thou might. Wait, hold up. We good. Man tampered with the Bible. It's plagiarized. 
It's been changed throughout the, th listen, most people that said that haven't done the research to even say that. First and foremost, you must understand, there's a certain thing called a strong concordance that have Hebrew words and Greek words, okay? What's injected, guess what? It's not in the Hebrew. What's injected is not in the Greek. So the Most High preserved his word through the earth, okay? And then our original artifacts were dug out in the Krumrum Caves close to where we were at, corroborating the truth of the scriptures. So I can get back to the original Hebrew and find out what it says. See, these are the excuses that we make when we don't want to follow something. Well, ma well, man tampered with this. I, there's no way we could be perfect. Who said that? You say that. But my God, my Savior, don't say that. If you believe in what you believe in, fine, follow you. <laughs> you become your God, follow you. Guess what? There's a religion for that. Where you're your own God. There's seven percenters. They're recruiting. But our God, our power, have rules and regulations. I wouldn't want to serve anybody who didn't. Like, imagine you being a father or a mother, and you don't have any rules or regulations in your home. And you let your kids do whatever they want. That's why the Bible says, how be it the natural than the spiritual. You understand in your own home, there are rules there. Hey, little Raheem, you touch that plug, you want to get electrocuted. Go touch that plug. See if you want to, but guess what? Before he touched the plug, you know what you're going to do? You're going to get that belt. And make sure that Raheem don't touch that plug so he lives. Well, that's the chastisement of the Most High. When we break his laws, okay, thou shalt not commit adultery. Oh, you about to go cheat on your wife. All of a sudden, your Facebook blow up. Your instagram -y blow up. I done caught you with such and such. Now your wife clocking you upside the head. Pow! You was with who? That's the chastisement of the Most High. Before you sin. Because when that ends, it brings forth death. Guess what? Some people have died in that. Cheating on their wives and things of that. People have died in that. Okay? Remember, the wages of sin always and still will be what? So sometimes the Most High give you a warning before you get into something you have no business dealing with. Because there are rules. How dare somebody sit in a pulpit and teach there are no rules? It's all grace. Grace covers everything. Just go sin and as long as you believe, you'll get in. What God is that? Malachi 3.6 says he's the Lord for he changed not. The same God that opened up the ground in Exodus when the, when the children of Israel were disobedient is the same God we serve today. So you can't do what you want. That's what they was teaching in Pentecost. You cannot do and serve who you want. The one you slew was the one you were supposed to be following. Go back to Acts so we can finish out. Good. Acts 2 and 12. There it is. Come on. And they were all amazed and were in doubt, saying one to another, what meaneth this? What meaning is this? You telling me about the Savior and this guy we just killed who, who we said was a, a wine bibbler and a friend of publicans and sinners. What are you telling me that this guy is the Savior for? Isn't, doesn't that sound familiar? They're still saying that today. I don't got to follow this guy. 
whom the world, you know, ignorantly called Jesus. Then no J's in Hebrew. Okay, so certainly these Israelites that were walking on the earth wasn't saying the J sound. It doesn't exist in our language. Where you get this from? J is, is new to the English alphabet. 19th century, 18th early, early this century, they just started saying the J sounds. So now we're going to be like, okay, well, this was what it was in ancient antiquity. No, see, that's the problem. Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. You want to hide it from a black man, put it in the where? Because we don't read. We'd rather be taught and sit there. I, but listen, I'm going to tell you what black people know. God is good and all the time, but we don't know the truth of it. We know every catchphrase in the Bible. We go to church like it's the WWE. We wait for the greatest wrestling promo ever. And God is going to give you a blessing. Amen. Amen. Bless him. Bless him. If I did that, had a whole place lit. And I can do it. I come from the Pentecostal church. But there's something greater. This is the issue. This is why our people are in the middle of North Philly and don't have any common sense or hope or know where they're going. This is why. Because there's no truth in the land. Guess what? Those same people that are selling drugs that's on the corner, they're going to be at Sunday service tomorrow. Now I'm going to tell you why. Because even from my own family, I experienced that. Okay, this, I'm not, I, this isn't new to me. I'm not no novice. We, I've seen this many years over. They on the corner, they slinging them things. They know they come in there, they looking for the nice, you know, they looking for the, you know, the Sunday honey. The one with the tight dress and the heels on. Where she at? There's no court in agreement. There's no law in the church. There's nothing governing it. There's no integrity. You can't come up here and lay with these daughters of Zion without any recourse in this church. Oh, I, I, I want to deal with this sister. I want to get married. Based off of what? You got to get, listen, requirement. You got to be in the Bible Academy in this church. You got to be in this church at least two years. You have to have a house and a car. You have to have something for that woman to come back to. This is not the church. If you want to do what you want to do, this is not that church. You got to come correct. And see, it's a beautiful thing when the finality of it comes together and it's all right and then everything is good and nobody can say, you know how, you know, it's almost like, and not to get off subject, but it, it's like one of those things when you see people and there is a wedding that go, go in place and people say, are there any objections? In no, most normal weddings, I'm telling you, it should be a long list of objections. I object, they just met last week. I object, they, I don't know them. I'm the mother, I've never seen this cat in my life. I, I object. And the pastors is paid, as long as they get their finances, they straight. Who I gotta marry, them two? Okay, great, what's the names? If you gotta ask, what, how do you pay a pastor to marry somebody? that he never men met, mentored or knew. What blessing are you putting over these people? And how spiritually can you vouch for that when the marriage is spiritual? We're gonna get to that in a minute.
But go back. Read. Others mocking said, these men are full of new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them. And said what? Ye men of Judea, and all ye are, all that do, deal, dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. And listen to my words. Come on. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose seeing it is but the third hour of the day. Mm. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith the Most High, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall, shall dream dreams. Come on. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Read. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Mm. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood. Now he's talking about the judgment. Come on. Before that great and notable day of the Most, most High come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Most High shall be saved. We, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Yeshia of Nazareth, a man approved of the Most High among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which the Most High did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by determinate Cancel and for knowledge of the Most High. Come on. Ye have taken and by wicked hands. That's it. So they said they taken Christ by wicked hands. Come on. Have crucified and slain. Have crucified and slain him. Read. Whom the Most High have raised up, having loosed the path, the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. Read. For David speaketh concerning him. I foresaw the most high also before my face come on for he is on my right hand that i should not be moved therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad moreover also my flesh shall rest in hope because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption read thou hast made known to me the ways of life Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Come on. Men and brethren. Men and brethren. Let me speak freely unto you of the patriarch David, that he both did and buried, and his subsequent is with us until this day. Read. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing the Most High, has sworn with an oath to him, that at the first of his loins, the, the fruit of his the loins, fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, according to the flesh, read, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He would raise up Christ to sit on the throne. Come on. He seeing this before spoke of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither was his flesh being did see corruption. Read. Then Yeshua have the Most High raised up. Whereof we all are witnesses, therefore being by the right hand of the Most High, exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, and he shred forth this, which ye know, which ye now see and hear. For David is not ascending into heaven, but he saved, he saved himself. The Most High said unto the most, to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstools to he make the foes his footstool read to right there and stop go ahead therefore let all the house of israel know assuredly that the most high have made that same yeshia whom ye have crucified both lord and christ now he had dropped it on them now this is the day when the holy spirit fell now i've been to many pentecost sermons I'm talking about it ended up being a music and a shouting fest 
but I've never understood what happened at Pentecost. Where this is the time where those that slain Christ and killed Christ, it was revealed to them that you killed him. And you know what happened? There were two things that happened. It showed that there was grace there because the way, they should have been dead. The wages of sin is death. But guess what? For some, actually, for about 3,000 of them, they were converted and baptized on the spot. Now, they didn't come to the feast day to get baptized, but when they heard this truth, they were pricked in their heart. They were like, wait, they thought about it. They said, wait, you know what that guy we just killed? Yeah, he, he, he did heal the sick. He did cleanse the leper. I, I remember him doing that. We did kill an innocent man. He probably is the savior. And to about 3,000 of them, that was enough for them to be converted and come into the truth. Matter of fact, it's right here where it says the crowd's response, and we'll close at that. Right there, verse 37. Acts 2 and 37. Read it. Now when they had heard this. And when they heard that they killed Christ. They were pricked in their hearts. Man, it, it did something to them. And said unto Peter, to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren. Men and brethren. What shall we do? What, what, what are we going to do? They, they, they just found out they killed Christ. And, and what are we going to do? Then Peter said unto them, repent. Wait, what did Peter say? Repent. He told them right there on the spot. Repent. We and be baptized every one of you in the name of Yeshua Christ for the remission of sins. For the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So they went straight into a baptism on Pentecost impromptu because they found out that the one that they killed was the one and in that very moment they were pricked and were baptized read it for the promises unto you as to your children wait hold up for the what is unto them? For the promise is unto you. Wait, yet again, we're not talking about a spiritual Israel here. Do y'all see that? These were Jews, devout men. He said the promise was unto you and your children. Not spiritual children. Your children. It's just like this. It's our job as this nation to raise our kids up in the right way. That's why the scripture says if we train a child up in the way that he should go, when he get older he won't depart. Depart from what? From the, the right path. If I teach my child from birth, the only one that you should lay with is your husband. That's a righteous path. If I teach my child you should never get locked up because you shouldn't steal. That's the righteous path. But then I can't go and teach my child because you know what a child's going to ask you? Because, see, they're, they're, in their mind, it's so pure. That's why Christ said we must be like one of the little ones. Because if I tell a child you can't steal, you can't, you can't commit adultery, and then I tell them, well, that one about the Sabbath day, don't worry about. Why? But you said do all of them. And a child will correct you. So it's the issue when it, when it comes into us being in the world and really having what the Bible calls the wine of Babylon. And that deep-rooted lie that resides in us to where we can't really come out of our comatose state. But this is what we were saying with that valley of dry bones. You see them. Look at these dead men and dead women walking. They don't even know who they are. You take a random and 
and, and you talk to a random Israelite, brown person, black person, and you got any talents? Man, listen, I go in this room, this talents galore. Just when one, you know, it's like you think it's a great thing when you feel like you can riff or sing. Listen, there's about 10, 20 people that could blow the roof off this place in here. It's like Showtime at the Apollo in here. Now, if I was to say, okay, well, you don't got that gift, let's go outside and race. Now, I know somebody out here that could run a 4-4. Four -four. Let's start lifting some weights. I seen, I seen Big Mike lift up a brother like he was nothing. There's so much blessings and strength in the, in the nation of Israel. And we have to let people know. We got to let our children know. There's a reason why you like this. You're special. Instead of saying what we normally say. Well, despite all our adversity, we could come up above this. We could rise above. Lift every voice. And Stop it. It's like, we're, we're, it's like the, 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 the blackness. The blackness is the new religion. That's the truth. Where Christ and whom died for us is not the truth. We got to follow the one that laid his life down for us. But finish this. And to all that are far off, even as many as the Most High, our power shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exalt, mm. saying, save yourselves from the up forward generation. He said, save yourself from this forward generation. Come on. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. How many? Come on. And the same day three were added unto them about 3,000 souls. 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. So they continue in doing the feast days. And here's the thing. I need y'all to understand this. Last point. If the law is done away with and grace abound over the law, Christ already died, right? And now the Holy Spirit have come down. So why are these disciples and men, after Christ died, gathering together on the Sabbath? See, these are the questions that the world can answer. They're together here on the Sabbath. This is not a Sunday. So there's nowhere in the Bible from cover to cover that changes the Most High's rest day from one day to the next. And from feast day to feast day, we should be gathering. But this is the day, brothers and sisters, if there was ever a time where you felt empty with the knowledge of the Most High, with the understanding which he give liberally, today, this is the day where you get filled. So we should all be filled and pray for that knowledge because this was the day that the Holy Spirit fell and power fell from on high. Let's give the Most High a hand clap.